Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Tease Foam and Terrain and all that. And today we're back into some naval action in the Falklands. Now, I sort of have to apologise, although I don't really want to apologise because life's life and it happens, you know, and sometimes it gets in the way. I don't know if you can tell with my voice, but I've been under the weather for the last ooh, four, four or five days. Um, came down with a fever. I think I got norovirus. Um, but anyway, uh, that kind of threw my schedule out as well as life getting busy. And unfortunately, I missed my dead my deadline date of the 30th of April that I was aiming for. But I think I should at this point note that um, although I aim to get the fleet painted by the 30th of April, ready for the anniversary of the fleet, or the initial fleet r arriving in the, uh, the British exclusion zone, I, I do want to say that actually the deadline has done the job. It's pushed me to get the, the, the fleet painted. Um, so although there's a bit of a delay, I still feel like I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. The main problem that I had uh, with being so busy and also being ill was I didn't have the time to actually film the, the, the process of the painting that I want to show you guys. So I will be showing you that. You'll see that in the next sort of section. Um, but I just kind of wanted to explain why this isn't out on Saturday, the uh, sorry, on Tuesday, the third, which has just passed. Um, you know, I got it out. Uh, I'll be getting this out probably the following Tuesday, so the Tuesday you're watching it'll be a week later than I wanted it to be. But my feeling was that I'd rather do a decent job making the, the the episode so that you guys can see what I've been doing rather than rush it. And and ultimately, they're my figures, they're my models. I want them to look good on the table, so I'm not going to rush them. So unfortunately, guys, you've had to wait a week long longer. I've not quite hit the deadline, but hey. That's life. This happens. The projects do get setbacks. Anyway, on to the project. What are we doing today? Well, we're getting the fl fleet ready to sail. So, um, as I said, I'm going to show you how I've painted them um, and I'll show you the finished fleet at the end of it, all painted up. It's looking absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm so impressed with how it came out. Um, I feel like I've, you know, first time ever doing ships, uh, modelling ships. Um, let alone in this scale. I've, I've not done ships before in the past at all. So this was a real achievement for me at first and, and I'm really pleased to say I've enjoyed it uh, and I think I'll be doing more of them in the future. Um, with regards to actually when I was painting them, I used quite a bit of resource material. A lot of it's images off the internet, but I've also used uh, this, which I picked up off, I think it was Amazon or uh, or eBay, but it's it's called the Falklands War. It's a set of, uh, it's actually a collection of uh, sort of weekly magazines that were brought out, I think in the aftermath of it. And, and they just, each issue follows a different section uh, of the war. There's another one there. Um, and within it, it's got some obviously images from the time uh, as well as some artist impression. And that was quite useful when uh, thinking about the colours, um, things like the sea, but also thinking of, of things like the ship. So there you go, front cover. Uh, that is, looks like, is that Hermes? That might well be Hermes. So you can, you know, I can already see some things there that you know I wanted to put into Hermes. So anyway, that's just a brief introduction. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump over to the workbench and see how I paint my fleet. See you in a moment. Hi right, guys, welcome back to the workbench. And as I said in the introduction, we're going to be looking at painting uh, the ships, uh, the fleet today. So. Um, when I uh, finished the, the last video that you would have seen uh, with regards to this project, I had um, attached all the ships to the bases. Um, I'd uh, left a little space for the name tag and I'd also textured the bases with some polyfiller creating that wave effect or, or the C effect that we were looking for. I then, the, the filler probably, I think I did it, uh, finished one evening and I sort of picked them up the next morning, probably 12 hours, and they were dry. I could have left them longer, probably even did, if memory serves me correctly. I might have actually got them finished, and then it might have been a day or so before I actually got round to finding the time to 
prime them. But basically, once I'd completed it, I put them all on a bit of cardboard. I took them outside and I spray paint them with a black primer. Now, this is a really, uh, you, know, you can get all sorts of different cheap black pr primers. Uh, they just come in rattle cans. The one I've used is the Halfords uh, Matte Black, relatively cheap and a can like this lasts me for quite a long time. I usually also pick up a gray one as well. And funnily enough with this project, I actually ran out of the black. So I do need to go and, and get another can before I do any more uh, priming with black. But anyway, um, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna basically take you through now the process uh, that I do. Um, it's probably gonna be a, a brief explanation followed by a, a, a um, what you call it, a time-lapse video, um, getting the bit done, then I'll move on to the next stage and explain it. Um, the reason for this is is probably because actually you don't want to sit and watch me do the job in real time because it's a bit tedious um, and it's also quite challenging uh, with doing it with the camera and getting hand, in, you know, not in the way and stuff like that. So uh, without further ado, what do we do first? Well, having primed uh, the the ships, and the base is a lovely black colour. The first thing I like to do, uh, or first thing I've done with the ships, is to use uh, a blue paint to do the, the basic sea colour. So for adding the uh, blue to the base, I'm going to take this uh, blue, uh, deep blue acrylic paint by Art Studios. I picked this up for a pound at the range, and I find these really useful. All I tend to do is give them a shake, take off the lid and then actually take the paint from inside the lid uh, without having to sort of take off the lid, pour it onto a palette and then potentially waste some. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna paint it on here and uh, probably trying to leave the name tag black. If I get a bit on there, not a problem. Also, if I get any on the ship, again, not a problem um, because we will be painting over it later. And also just as a point, some people sometimes ask, do you paint the size of your bases? Now for me personally, I do. Um, I know some people leave them uh, a different color, but I try to paint them uh, the same color as the base. I will leave the area, uh, sorry, the edge by the name tag black. All right, so let's go into a bit of uh, um, time lapse and uh, get this painted. Okay, so there's the first uh, layer of paint on. Now, as you can see, it's a really rich blue um, and I've given it a really good coat. And this generally probably is the coat that takes the longest to dry. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna move that over to the other table. We're gonna let that dry. Um, and I'm gonna bring on another one that I've prepared earlier uh, to show you the next stage. Um, yeah, so let's move that one over. Fantastic, so the next one that we've got then uh, is this one. Here's one that I've already done earlier and here's one uh, that has dried. Now, what you might notice is it's almost got a bit of a purpley tinge to it. I don't know if you can see particularly well down there, but it almost looks a little, a little bit purple, um, which is fine um, because we're gonna do things to it, which is going to help us out. Um, so the next stage that I, I worked on, and this was all an experiment from me. I got a few different paints, um, uh, they're all acrylic paints um, and, and for this I tend to go for these cheaper ones from places like the range because um, I'm generally using them for bases or for um, terrain which generally uses um, uh, sort of a lot of paint and I don't want to be wasting my sort of more expensive Vallejo paints and other paints like that on terrain. So anyway, um, one of the other colours I got was this uh, turquoise um, lagoon. Uh, again, it was a pound for this uh, from the range. And I did try one base with this as my base colour, but I thought it was just a bit too green. Now, looking at pictures of the South Atlantic uh, Ocean, 
I did notice that you often do see a bit of green uh, in the in the colour of the sea, and I wanted to bring that out. So my next step, um, after I've got that blue there and it's dried, is to take this and do uh, what I'm calling a, a heavy dry brush. So rather than taking almost all of the paint off the brush, I'm actually going to leave um, a bit on, and I'm really looking to get a good kind of green tint to this blue colour. So once again, I will, um, in fact, for this, let me just get my palette, so I'll get my little palette so I can rub off some of the paint and then we'll do a bit of dry brushing. So, so let's have a go at doing some dry brushing on this, uh, this ship here. So I'll just show you in real time because it is relatively quick. We will get some of the turquoise paint on a brush, not brush too much off. And there's a very simple, just a, uh, almost uh, brushing it over the top, trying not to make too much contact, but getting enough contact that we actually get some of the color onto, uh, onto the base. And as I think I said before, it doesn't matter if we get too much of, of this on because the, the colours later on are going to take uh, or certainly disguise this. And this, this dr dries also much uh, lighter. So let's see if we can give this another go. Right. There we go. We're starting to get some of that colour here. Brilliant. All right. So there we go. And that's the green color, I think. I think you can see that. Hopefully. Anyway, green's colors on there. We're now going to put that to one side to uh, to dry. And then we'll be able to crack on with the next one. So after that, we then move on to the next stage. So I'm going to get a ship that I did earlier. That's dry now. So I've just, I've already done the, uh, the sort of the green highlight. And again, I don't know if you can see it. It is very it dries very subtle, um, but it is on there. Anyway, so the next the next stage is to. Uh, sort of make the waves pop up and for this we're going to use uh, some white just bog standard white paint uh, this is obviously acrylic it's of a similar range um, to uh, what I've been using for the other stages um, so we're just going to get a little bit of this white we're going to get it on the brush this time we, we are doing a much more traditional dry brush so we're going to get mo the majority of the paint off the brush and then all we're going to do, once again, dragging it, trying to catch the, the sort of the high parts of the, the base there. And what this does really nicely is it, it really does bring out a little bit more of that blue, which I think uh, it sort of turned into more of a purple. And it also bring, ties together that green uh, along with the, the blue. And I think it just sort of, it almost makes it like a like a sea, like an ocean at that point. It, it just all comes together at that point, the colours. All right, and you can see there. Looks like a sea now. <laughs> so that is that level, uh, that stage there. Okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next stage now. Okay, and here is the finished... Uh, product after that white dry brush as you can see I've picked out a lot of the high points it has also gone between the high points and just I think just brought out the green and the blue a little bit more like I said that lighter color as you can see we, we are starting to get more of a sea like look to it okay I have got a little bit on the ship but again doesn't matter we're going to paint over it okay and you can see more on that side that I've uh, definitely got it a little bit more on the ship there all right, so we're going to move that over to the drying phase. And we're going to tackle the 
next part. So again, here's one I did earlier. And you can see again, the, the blues there coming out, the greens there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to emphasize the bow wake and the propeller wake, okay? Now to do this, what we wanna do is grab a, a relatively detailed brush. I'm gonna use uh, this Winsor & Newton um, I think this is, I think this is down as a one. It's not, not, not a particularly detailed brush, not particularly small. All right. But it, as Windsor and Newtons go, but it is quite detailed. It's one of my nicer ones. And I'm, all I'm going to do for this, I'm going to take my white paint. And I think for this, I'm, I'm not going to do a time lapse because it's not going to take me very long. This is such a quick part of the, the process. We're going to get a little bit of white paint on the tip of our brush. And what we're looking to do is just to highlight the uh, the tops of the wakes coming out. So if I remember correctly, there's one here. So I'm just going to go along the top here. Maybe a bit thick, but that's not a problem. Again, you make these mistakes, you learn, you can either rub them off or, or just go with it, you know waves all sorts of things if you don't get a bit of the wave done that's fine just leave it i'm trying to do a steady hand whilst on camera that's always good fun yeah and again it you know not all waves are the same these things don't always replicate the same remember it's also going to be three foot away from you on a table you know so how these things look close up isn't always the best judge all right so there's the propeller wake we're going to do the same on the bow wake. So let me just get a bit more paint on my brush and we're going to come in and again, try to do this without getting in the way of the camera. And you really want to try to use the tip. But again, if you get bits that, you know, get more paint on them that, than others. Okay, never mind, you know, it can all add to the effect. It's and and all this is through trial and error. I will say I'm no professional painter. I've tried it on the other. I think I've done six so far, or seven of these, and I'm just you know playing around with it, seeing what what happens, see what looks good. All right. Well, let's do the other side because that will make a difference to as to how it looks. So again, just trying to identify which is the bow wake that I made. And and this we did back with the tool when we, uh, if you remember when we were adding the uh, filler onto the base. So, all right, and there we have it. We've got the bow wake and we've got the, the, the uh, propeller wake. Okay. Again, doesn't look bad. If you, if you want it to be a little bit brighter you're not happy with one side or something just go back in and add a bit more it's just a, all right i'm happy with that so there's the bow wake and the propeller wake and we're going to move on now to the next phase so take that over to the dry rack happy with that and the next stage we move on to looking at the ship itself. So let's put away that white paint and let's bring out this. Now I've picked a dark gray. What I'll do is actually put up the picture of the um, Vallejo paint. If you wanted to go for an of Vallejo uh, paint for a Royal Navy British ship, um, I believe it's dark sea gray. Um, and I can't remember the number, what I'll do, I'll put the picture up on the screen now so that you can see um, which one it is. I've actually gone for this, again, a, a cheap acrylic paint from the range. It was a pound for the pot, and this one's dark grey uh, in the uh, Doe Crafts Artiste um, range. I don't know if they sell them anymore, um, but because, uh, again, I uh, bought this one at a different time. But... It lasts for a while, we're looking for a darkish grey. And again, we're gonna put a wash on it as well. So these colors change a bit and you can play around, you can experiment. 
All right, so again, all we're gonna do, we're gonna take this paint and we're gonna look to paint the entire ship gray. I'm gonna use, uh, again, my Windsor & Newton brush that I've been using for the, the wakes. Um, trying to avoid the sea where possible if you catch it don't uh, a little bit of sea don't worry it can always be a little bit of uh splash up from the wave um it's not a problem as it's gray it kind of just all melt m melds in merges in with the sea so not a problem so i'm going to go back to the time lapse because this does take a bit of time a bit tedious and um we'll uh we'll we'll go from there so you can see this ship being painted so here we go. So here we are with the uh, finished painted ship. Uh, I've gone over it, made sure I've checked. Uh, I've, I've not left any black showing. I'm not too worried around the bottom of the hull if there's a bit of black shown because actually the British naval uh, ships do have sort of this black line uh, sort of usually sits below the water line. Uh, but every now and again, when it comes up out, out, out of the water, you do see it. So not a problem if you have left a little bit of black. Um, and again, not so much a problem if the paint's a little bit too thick or a little bit too thin in places. I would air probably more on the side of thick. Um, but that's just that I guess that's just my technique anyway oh, if I don't knock the camera we're gonna throw this over on the drying table and we're gonna move over to the next step so again here's one I did earlier and uh, as you can see this one has been painted and is, is now dry so the next step is to apply a wash and for this I'm going to use Citadel's Nun Oil really nice and easy uh, process this in fact I probably won't even do it as a, a time lapse because it is so quick we're going to take a standard brush um, and uh, give this a shake now I don't want this to be too thick so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it and I'm just going to rub off the excess or wipe off the excess I should say and then we're just going to put it all over the ship I don't really want it pulling too too much um, obviously we want it to pull in the recesses but not excessively we're looking to pick out the detail without um, sort of big black sort of puddles as it were um, so we're going to go all over the hull all over the decks and all the superstructure and Sort of rigging that not rigging but um all the uh the masts and stuff the radars and all that so again doesn't take long just make sure we do a nice comprehensive coat all over and with this i, I tend to go from four i go from the side i go from the front i go from the rear and i go from the other side just so that i can make sure that i've got the wash um sort of with a good coverage all over because sometimes you, know, you can miss it and then you just doesn't quite look right so um i mean to be fair if you come for do the sides first generally you manage to get everything i find uh, and then quick from the from the stern just to to check you've got in and the different faces of the radars and the towers and all that good stuff but yeah, pretty much that is going to do it. And already, I hope you can see, we're, we're starting to see a bit more detail. Uh, let's just check that out. Yeah, lovely. And sometimes going from the top as well just helps as well. Good. Lovely. Right. So there is, which one's this? This is Coventry. So there we go. And as you can hopefully tell, we're starting to see it's starting to pop out a little bit more from the base. Obviously, when it was black, it, you, you, it was really hard to see on the base. Now we've got some grey to it. It's starting to um, stand out a bit more and the wash has definitely defined it. So we're going to pass that over to the drying table and we'll pull out uh, another one that I've done earlier. 
secure that. And here's another one I've done earlier. Okay. So this is sort of the second to last um, stage uh, of, of the... Um, of the painting we are getting really close at the point and we've got a couple of things to do the first is a highlight um, so we're going to use this lighter gray and again i'm using this granite gray it's an apple barrel one so it's from america it's lasted me ages the most important thing is it's lighter than the base color that we used on the ship okay so that's the first highlight that we're going to put on we're also going to use a bit of black and we're using black for a couple of things um, on on the ship in this instance. Um, in the Falklands, um, specifically, the Royal Navy had a policy of, of sort of putting a black band or a, a, a black um, uh, colour on the on the tops of the funnels um, and some of the masts at times as an identification method. Um, so. Obviously, what I'll be doing is looking at my reference material for this ship. And this one is Antrim. All right, HMS Antrim. And I'll just be looking at the pictures um, to identify where those black uh, markings need to be. The other thing I use the black for, and I get a very small brush and I, I just do some dots, is finding the bridge, identifying where the windows would be, and then just doing a row of black dots across where those windows would be. If you look at pictures um, of the ships, often the windows do come out looking like black dots. So um, that's another thing to do. And the final thing that I use the black for is just to paint the uh, the, the name area, the name tag area, uh, black again, just to, and you can see I've got a little bit of the dry brush on here, a little bit more, a little bit of blue or green, turquoise maybe. So I just paint that in black again. That gives me a really nice base then to, um, to put the name on when it comes to that. Okay, so I think for this one, because it's a bit more of a longer process, particularly with Antrim, there's a lot of detail on here. Uh, and I should say with the lighter gray, we are looking to get sort of the raised edges. So we're looking for the sides of the decks. We're looking for all of the all of the edges on on the various different bulkheads and radars. And with the domes, I try to not do the, the top of the dome or maybe I do is. I mean, you could I suppose you could do this as a dry brush. Uh, but what I like to do is just get my brush and just do a really thin line along the edges uh, of all the sort of uh sharp lines as were well. the gun barrels the torpedo launcher tubes all things like that um just and and it will make it pop um so i'm going to crack on and get that done we'll do that in another time lapse and we'll come back and uh, see the difference that it's made so back in a flash And we're back and that is HMS Arrow named. Now, um, you will have seen on the video, I've worked pretty, uh, not quickly, but I've worked carefully. And I've also worked on the principle that I'm just trying to make the basic marks of the letter. I can always go back and make the, the, the parts of the letter brighter, adding more paint if necessary. But what I'm trying to do first and foremost is get the letters down make sure they all fit if you go wrong you can always paint it black again and start again it's the beauty of of working like this so that's uh, that's the naming process um i will show you pictures um uh, sort of after i've finished rabbiting on uh, before the end of this video what we'll do is we'll finish with uh, some various pictures of the uh, the fleet all finished up and um and you know then you can see them all there um 
obviously, as always, if you've liked, please, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more or, if, or you like all the content. It's really encouraging. We're uh, flying through 400 and I think 76, 77 or something when I'm shooting this. And that's, that's all, probably at least a week before I release this. So, um, you know, in, incredible how much support, um, you know, over the last month. It's, it's been brilliant. Thank you to everybody for that. Um, obviously, any comments, please drop them below. I love seeing it and uh, seeing the comments and, um, you know, I'll rep reply to them all. Um, and, yeah, just keep, you know, keep keep throwing all the feedback my way because I, I really appreciate it. Um, this has been great fun. I am going to do more with this. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned a previous video, but I'm, I've started toying around with some ideas for rules for particularly the Falklands, but I think Cold War naval actions in general. Um, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to, I'm going to use all these models um, to play test some of those ideas and, and the game uh, when, when it gets to a game sort of stage. Um, and, I, and I may well share some of those ideas or I might do some, I don't know, battle report, whatever it is. I'll do some videos on that. So don't think that this project's finished. Um, I also want to get some Argentine ships now. Uh, so that may well be the next job. I may well uh, take a little bit of a break while I wait for uh, getting those purchases done and then uh, waiting for those to be delivered before I uh, essentially do another video, which, you know, I might not do exactly the same videos. I might just do a big overview um, showing show me doing the Argentine stuff. Um, might do a painting because they might be slightly different colours, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But um, anyway, I've, I've got the Lord of the Rings project still going um, and uh, I probably need to tackle some 20 mil stuff at some point, um, some terrain from a 10 mil Falklands as well. So there's plenty going on on the channel. So do keep following along, uh, even if uh, naval, naval fighting is really your, your, your passion. You know, there is plenty of other stuff out there that might be of uh, some interest to you. So, um, yeah, keep keep following us along and uh, I'll catch you soon in another video. So take care. We'll see you soon.